You'll need the protractor and the caster camera gauge for this. If you bought just a camera caster gauge, you'll need to make your own adapter like this. The gauge screws into the middle, and at either end there's bolts that screw in. The bolts are adjusted so they're protruding the exact same amount, and they are what rest against the lip of the wheel. I've covered them with painter's tape to stop them from scratching anything. If you're willing to pay more, you can get universal adapters that mount onto the wheel. To reduce tire friction with the floor, I'm making some trash bag slip plates. Just spray some WD-40 on the bag, then fold it over on itself. Start by centering the steering wheel. Get something wide and flat that can rest against a wheel. I'm using this old piece of wood from I found in my garage. Push it against a wheel so either end of the top surface is resting against the tire and the bottom center should be resting against the tire bulge. While you're holding it in place, lay a piece of painter's tape on the floor along the bottom edge. Set your protractor to 20 degrees. Now turn the wheel so the front of the wheel is pointing out. You need to get it to 20 degrees out. So hold the board against the wheel again, then line the protractor up against the board. Then once the other arm on the protractor is parallel with the tape, you know you're at 20 degrees. Now hold your gauge against the wheel and zero out with the caster adjustment. When reading the gauge, you read to the center of the bubbles. Carefully set the gauge out of the way, then turn the wheel so it's pointing 20 degrees inward. Hold the gauge against the wheel again, and you'll get your current caster. Here you can see I'm at just under 3.5. I'm reducing my caster to 2.5, so that involves pushing the bottom of the knuckle further towards the back of the car. The adjustment for this is at the front of the radius rod. There's a nut on either side, and depending on which one you loosen and which one you tighten, you'll either pull the rod forward or push it backwards. The front nut is 24 millimeter and the rear 22. You can also use 15 sixteenths and 7 eighths. It's easiest to turn the rear nut with a crow's foot or stubby wrench. After you've made your adjustment, center the wheel again. You'll need to reapply the tape because the car tends to walk a little bit when you turn the wheel side to side. Just keep redoing this exact same procedure until you get the caster you want. Doing the other side is the exact same procedure. A 
adjusting the camber is much simpler. Start by centering the wheel. Now just place the gauge against the wheel again and read the camber. Here you can see I have negative 3.75, which is just fine. I'm mainly concerned that it's the same on each side. So I'm going to check the other side real quick, then come back to this side and set it the same. To change the camber, jack up the corner so the tire isn't touching the floor anymore. Loosen the 17mm nuts on top of the control arm, then slide the ball joint inward to increase negative camber, or outward to increase positive. The other side was negative 3.5, so I'm going to slide this ball joint out just a hair to get it to match. Before you can check the camber again, you need to settle the suspension. That involves pushing it back out of the bay and pushing it back in while you're rocking the car to get everything to settle back down. Setting the camber in the rear is done the exact same way. Remember, this video is a supplement for the information on the website. Read that article for more info. Link in the description.